Hello, today we have uh, Paula Hilbaithan, uh, who is the advocacy coordinator of Cash Learning and, and Partnerships. Uh, so we would like to ask you first, uh, what's uh, localization for you? So I think that's a very interesting question and, and we should have you know, always start by defining the term because for us in particular in the world of cash, I think localization means um, working closer with local NGOs who are implementing cash programs, but also giving back kind of uh, the important role that local governments need to have in terms of um, coordination of a, of a cash response. There are people who include in localization the fact that through cash you can reach local actors and the benefits stay locally. Um, Someone even called it super localization no, when you do cash, but I think it's important to, to maintain the focus on local NGOs and local governments. Great, and uh, so uh, how do you see cash transfer programs to actually really contribute to the localization agenda? Yeah, well it's a massive potential, right? So to put it bluntly, there's a lot of opportunity in cash programming. There is a lot of interest behind it, which means there's a lot of money. So if we're looking at really building the fiduciary capacity of local NGOs, then cash is a perfect way of doing that because there is a political will and there is the, the funding behind it. I think also cash allows local NGOs and local governments to really get close to uh, communities to understand what their preferences are and what their needs are. So it's an opportunity not only to build their capacity but to strengthen their role you know, as, as a community lead. And uh, in order to overcome all the challenges and gaps that are still in the field, um, how how um, how does uh, how should the humanitarian system change? Uh, what policy should be more implemented uh, in order to give uh, so that the localization approach can actually be uh, implemented? That is a super interesting question. I think um, one simple way of saying it is agencies and donors have to let go of the control. So cash challenges the way that we um, provide assistance to people and therefore challenges the way that we conceive no, uh, vulnerability. Um, when you give someone a cash grant, you first understand that they understand what they need better than you do, right? And they can also procure whatever that they need better than you can. So I think that shift in terms of the way that we think about vulnerable people needs to be the first thing to change. Then the second thing to change would be our need to compartmentalize the way that we provide assistance. So cash has shed light on the fact that people have a variety of needs that they fulfill in their own time. Um, and I think it's important for us as a humanitarian sector to realize that we can no longer work in very defined silos and very defined sectors when needs are not compartmentalized that way. So do you already see a visible, tangible effects in the field uh, that come from uh, an increasing uh, localization approach? Um, I think more and more local NGOs are implementing cash programs where the UN and big NGOs can't implement themselves. So when you're talking about implementing, I don't know, cash programs remotely in Libya, it's a local NGO, right? When you're talking about Syria, it's always a local NGO. My question would be, um, do, do those local NGOs have direct access to funding? I bet you they don't, right? Do they have the capacity to implement a cash program without a bigger agency holding their hand, right, in terms of the accountability? I bet you they don't. So for me, the biggest change that would need to happen is for them to be able to, to act directly access funding, to be able to implement cash programs at the same level and quality as a UN agency or, or an NGO could do that. Um, I haven't yet seen that, but I hope I'll see that in my lifetime. <laughs>